Hello and welcome to Advanced Retro Adaptics. I'm Tyler Disney. So this is my first podcast after getting back from my bike trip. I wrote a post about it, which is on my blog at tylerjdisney.com. So if you want to hear about that, or rather if you want to read about that, go to my blog. I just don't feel like talking about it. It didn't really translate into speaking it, so I'll probably get around to talking about my trip somehow on the podcast at some point, but that point is not now. Today, I want to talk about being anti-defeatist. So I consider myself to be anti-defeatist and also post-doom. Um, I, I wanted to make it impossible to miss by having a podcast and a post with anti-defeatist in the title. That way, if anyone accuses me of being defeatist, I can just link to this essay, to this podcast, and then go back to you know whatever I was doing. So, okay, what's a defeatist? By defeatist, I'm referring to the position that things are so bad, we are so doomed, that there's no point in trying to do anything about it, right? So just give up. So this this position is two things. One, it's a fact claim that, that looks like it's either correct or incorrect. You know, we're screwed, the world cannot be saved. So putting aside just for a moment the reality that basically no one bothers defining who we are, what the world is, what precisely they mean by saved and screwed. Like the statement, the statement basically boils down to we're in checkmate. Um, Either, either we are, we are are not in checkmate. And then, and then the second thing is it's an opinion about how we should respond to that fact claim about being in checkmate. The defeatist opinion is there's no point in fighting. If we are doomed, then there's no point in fighting. Right. And I just think, that's ridiculous. So for, first of all, it's far from clear that we, the world, or us, are in fact doomed and beyond saving for any variety of definition of the words uh, world, us, doomed, or saving, right? So my response to the claim that we're in checkmate is first, define your terms, otherwise we're not even talking about the same thing. And either way, eh, maybe... Like, to be honest, there's no circumstance under which I think, personally, there is no point in fighting is an acceptable position. I am categorically, emotionally, logically, ecumenically, and spiritually 100% against rolling over, no matter what, purely as a matter of style, honestly. I'm an annoying guy who will keep moving my king around the board until my opponent actually boxes me in or gets up and leaves in exasperation, right? So even if it's true that we are in checkmate, I'd rather spend the the rest of my life fighting and moving because to me that's simply an expression of the conditions under which all humans have operated for all time. We're all doomed. We've always all been doomed all the time for the entire history of humanity, but we live and fight and dance anyways. That's kind of what it means to be human. So to give up to accept a sort of defeatist position to me is is kind of anti-human. Now I understand despair. I get I understand the blackness. Our fierce little hearts were not designed to grasp the enormity of the meta crisis and of the predicament. And sometimes all we can see is the end. I hold space for that. I I, I don't mean to uh, this shouldn't be a way of shaming anyone for going through the grief process, right? If you have climate grief, if you have whatever we're calling it, is a polycrisis, existentialist despair, like you've got to work for that. You have to take that seriously. Um, that's not the same thing as being defeatist, I think. But I refuse to sugarcoat things or to shame anyone who can't see any reason for hope, right? Like everyone's got to go through their own Kubler-Ross cycle and everyone needs support and compassion for that. When I say things like the ship is going down, you know, I talk about this metaphor of the the lifeboat flotilla, right? What I'm saying is I think that the current arrangement is doomed and we ought to like make something that is less shit. I do not mean that we should shrug at a bowl and just wait for the end, right? Um, You know, I, I mean that we ought to, I think we ought to apply our cleverness, wisdom, passion, interest, curiosity, sense of play, sense of love for each other, like our basic humanness. We ought to apply our basic humanness to engage fully in the experience of being alive now and and doing something about the landscape of of possible futures. There's there's been a big emergent propaganda project. And by that I mean I, I'm not, I'm not saying like there's an evil cabal of people who are doing this. I'm just saying that like this is kind of how the system works. But there's been a sort of propaganda 
project, again, that's emergent, to make people think that the options are either A, the current arrangement, or B, everything gets scooped into a black hole and God turns off the lights, right? Like from an, from an imaginal perspective, so many people think that either we have to have faith in this system, like what we've got now, and if what we've got now doesn't work, then like God flips off the lights and that's it. That's the end of the show. And that's ridiculous. So, you know, when people say things like, oh, it looks like we're an overshoot, uh, globally speaking, and uh, collapse might be inevitable, which is a perfectly reasonable thing to say and have a discussion about, and it's fine to disagree with it, but we can have a discussion about it, it's reasonable. But so often, when people hear this, they lose their minds and think we're talking about rolling over and letting every good thing in the world evaporate. And this is nothing more than a simplistic failure of imagination. But look, if you think what people are saying is is everything good in the world is going to eva uh, evaporate, then you're like, yes, they're being species traders from that perspective, but that's not actually what's going on. We need to understand what is really going on, what our actual landscape of optionality is. We've spent, and, and, and a lot of this is understandable, you, you know, like, as a culture, we've spent a lot of time and energy talking about what's wrong with the current arrangement. Like there's so many different perspectives of criticism for what we've got now. And so there's a lot of people who are very familiar with like, oh, the system sucks because of A, B, C, D all the way through, you know, some crazy hexadecimal number, like all these reasons why we've, what we've got sucks. But we've spent as a group of people, we spent much less energy imagining what the other options are that suck less. Like we've we've criticized the system six ways from Sunday, but we haven't spent a remotely proportionate amount of energy thinking about ways to get from the system that sucks, okay, it sucks, to something that sucks less. I believe that there's a whole universe of possible future features, and, and to me that's exciting and interesting. But you can't get too excited and interested if you can't imagine anything other than Star Trek or zombies. To me, a defeatist is someone who sees that the Star Trek future we were promised is probably not in the cars. But the only other alternative they can come up with is zombies. And not the fun kind of zombies, but like zombies if Cormac McCarthy wrote them, right? Like nobody wants that. But it's not the only option. In, in fact, it, it might not even be likely at all. Our future is much richer than most people give it credit for. I mean, the, the array of possibilities for our future is much richer than most people give it credit for. And that's, I think, a failure of our culture, not of like the individual people. You tend to pick up the ideas that are laying around to populate your idea of the future with, and there just aren't enough uh, ideas laying around, like, and, and not just utopian ideas. Part of the problem is that it's like, it's either sort of unrealistically utopian or it's Cormac McCarthy zombies, right? And there's a whole spectrum of possibilities that are much more likely than either of those two in between those two uh, options. So this might be the most succinct way to describe my anti-defeatism. My anti-defeatism. I believe in a rich landscape of possible futures, not an infinite landscape. I don't believe in all of the options. They're just futures we can imagine that we, we, we will not get. They're not possible, right? So I don't believe in an infinite landscape, but I believe, in a, I believe in a rich landscape of possible futures. There are a lot of ways the future can go, and I plan on dancing through it until I can't dance anymore because, like, what other choice do we have? <laughs>